China lights up the sky with a secret weapon test. Global supply chain issues threaten Christmas. And one girl gets a math problem very, very wrong. Then more on this week's China News Headline. Welcome to John Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Big news this week. There's new concern tonight about China's military capabilities amid a report the country recently tested a nuclear-capable hypersonic missile. And it's understood that U.S. intelligence had no idea that China had moved this far ahead. Now this capability that flies at multiples of the speed of sound, that's what hypersonic translates into, is very difficult to defend against. That is absolutely shocking. I had no idea former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo had lost all that weight. Also, the whole hypersonic missile thing. This is a new capability for China. Of course, there are conflicting reports about what this actually means. On the one hand, the Pentagon admits it doesn't know how to defend against a nuclear-capable hypersonic missile, while China denies it even was a hypersonic missile. It was just a space vehicle. Yeah, a space vehicle. Which is obviously a lie, because China loves to hype up its space rocket launches. But they were completely quiet about this test, which happened back in August. This is why you come to China Uncensored to get the facts. I can tell you what this really means. It means... China has successfully killed the wither, and now has the resources necessary to activate a beacon. This story broke in the Financial Times the hypersonic missile thing, not the Minecraft analysis. China tested a nuclear-capable hypersonic missile in August that circled the globe before speeding towards its target, demonstrating an advanced space capability that caught U.S. intelligence by surprise. The missile missed its target by two dozen miles, but that's still a huge leap in what the Pentagon believed were China's capabilities. This is also worrying since China recently has been rapidly expanding its nuclear missile capabilities. The test happened as President Biden begins his nuclear posture review. Basically, the U.S. is torn between arms control advocates and those who say the U.S. needs to modernize its nuclear arsenal because of China. The editor-in-chief of my favorite Chinese state-run media, The Global Times, tweeted a response to the story. He said the test will ensure that the U.S. abandons the idea of nuclear blackmail against China. In other words, China wants the U.S. to abandon support for Taiwan. I mean, is Taiwan worth the risk of nuclear annihilation? This is, of course, the standard tactic of the Chinese Communist Party. Its military is woefully unprepared for a kinetic war with the U.S. It hasn't fought this kind of war in decades. That would become very apparent the first time Chinese troops actually had to fight. So instead, the party tries to convince other countries that any attempts to stand up to the Communist Party would be too bloody. So just give up now. Convenient. Of course, the longer it takes to stand up to the Communist Party, the more likely they could actually develop something that could pose a threat to the U.S. So. What was the Biden administration's response to China developing a nuclear capability U.S. intelligence thought was impossible? One that we have no defense for? Uh, we welcome stiff competition, but do we, not, we don't, do not want that competition to veer into conflict. I, for one, welcome our Chinese overlords. And after the break, China isn't done with new weapons. Welcome back. As if the secret hypersonic missile test wasn't enough, China is also showing off fancy new drones made from recycled Soviet-era fighter jets. And guess where the drones are? On two of its East Coast bases near Taiwan. Meanwhile, Chinese and Russian Navy ships jointly sailed through the Japan Strait. The strait is considered international waters, but it's clearly sending a message to Japan. If China invades Taiwan, Japanese forces had better leave it alone or else Russian and Chinese ships could create problems up north. So you know how the Chinese regime has been stealing intellectual property from the U.S. for decades? Oh, I wonder if that includes technology that could build a hypersonic missile. But in some cases, the Chinese regime didn't have to steal U.S. technology at all. Not when we just sell it to them. 
the U.S. government just banned the sale of hacking tools to China. Hold on. We didn't have a rule about that before? The rule, which will take effect in 90 days, would cover software such as Pegasus, a potent spyware product sold by the Israeli firm NSO Group to governments that have used it to spy on dissidents and journalists. I guess Chinese leader Xi Jinping is going to have to cross Pegasus software off his Christmas list. Speaking of Christmas, there have been concerns about how the global supply chain crisis might affect it. And in a recent episode, I told you about how China's power shortage could make things worse. Now, it's looking like Christmas prices might be up as much as 15%. There is good news, however. China can use hydropower to solve its energy crisis. First, China is telling mines to produce as much coal as possible, which it can do because, according to the Paris Climate Agreement, China can keep increasing coal usage till 2030, when it's supposed to peak. And this latest directive will create a wellspring of tears from environmentalists who believe the Chinese regime actually cared about the environment. And now, a well-placed hydroelectric dam can turn those tears into usable electricity. Chinese billionaire Jack Ma has had his fair share of woes lately. After a short spell being disappeared for a few months last year, he reappeared and now, for the first time, he's been allowed to leave China. He is now in Europe to see friends, taste wines, and conduct business meetings. Since the party wouldn't let Ma leave unless they were certain he wouldn't try to flee, this suggests that Ma has managed to ford whatever tumultuous political waters he found himself caught in. A $37 billion IPO for his company Ant Financial was blown up last year, likely because the company had lots of connections with Xi Jinping's main political rival, Jiang Zemin. I did a full episode about that recently. Link is below. But while Jack Ma is free, five students in Hong Kong have been sentenced to almost five years in jail over the 2019 protests. The charges were rioting and breaking a mask ban. Yes, back then the Hong Kong government said you weren't allowed to wear a mask. And even though there was a lack of evidence that they were involved in rioting, they must have intended to participate in the violence or encouraged others to take part in it. What a wonderful rule of law you have there, Hong Kong. You're guilty because even though you didn't commit a crime, we know you wanted to. Speaking of things that are a crime in China, NBA player Ennis Cantor made headlines this week for saying this. Brutal dictator of China, Xi Jinping, I have a message for you and your henchmen. I will say it again, again, and again, loud and clear. I hope you hear me. Free Tibet, free Tibet, free Tibet. Wait, celebrities calling for a free Tibet? I guess the 90s really are back. I think the Chinese Communist Party heard Ennis Cantor loud and clear, because Cantor's team, the Boston Celtics, have now been censored in China. Chinese internet company Tencent is no longer carrying live streams for Boston Celtic games, and some Chinese NBA fans are calling for a boycott. Totally unprompted by the Chinese regime, I'm sure. The NBA is probably upset. I mean, they just got done apologizing for then Houston Rockets manager Daryl Morey's tweet supporting Hong Kong back in 2019, and now they have to apologize all over again for Ennis Cantor's call for Tibetan independence. Cantor himself is unlikely to apologize. He's spoken up for years against human rights violation in his native country of Turkey, to the point where Turkey has issued 10 arrest warrants for Cantor. I guess if you're already angering one authoritarian regime, you might as well go for the biggest one in the world. Good for you, Ennis. And finally, a father in China begged police to arrest him because his daughter couldn't solve a math problem. The father had a breakdown in the middle of a road and begged police to arrest him. He said he couldn't go home because his daughter couldn't solve a math problem, and that made him feel angry and helpless. Now, to be fair to the father, he told police, My daughter subtracted 700 from 800. She said the result is 900. That is pretty bad. I mean, what would you do in his place? Hopefully not what this other guy did. Last month, a man in Hunan went to a hospital emergency department after dislocating his jaw 
when he became enraged while trying to tutor his daughter. Well, after the CCP started pushing Xi Jinping thought over subjects like math and banned private tutoring companies, it's no wonder parents feel angry and helpless. And now it's time for me to answer a question from a fan, one of you who supports China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon and Locals. Isolated Thinker asks on Locals, how many more natural and CCP-induced disasters will it take before the Chinese people force the CCP out because they lost the mandate from heaven? Good question, isolated thinker. I think as soon as the economy goes, there goes the mandate of heaven. The CCP essentially made a Faustian bargain with the Chinese people. As long as you don't criticize the regime for a complete lack of transparency or respect for basic human rights and dignity, we'll let you make money. And after forcing the Chinese people through generations of grinding poverty, death, and destruction, that probably sounded like the best deal they could get. While there were economic reforms in the 80s, the Tiananmen Square Massacre was the party telling Chinese people there would be no political reforms. Of course, the CCP was able to keep that promise of wealth because Western countries, particularly the United States, were pumping so much money into China. But with the current crisis in China's real estate market, and the issues with the power crunch and global supply chain issues, it seems like all that did was to get the rest of the world tied to the Chinese Communist Party. So now, if it goes down, it will take everyone with them. Now that's karma. Thanks for your question, isolated thinker. And thank you for watching. Please support us on patreon.com slash chinauncensored or on chinauncensored.locals.com. And you'll have the chance for me to answer one of your questions on the show. I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.